and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saiken and today we're looking at the agents of Lamplighters League. This is a guide that will uh, try to first of all explain the different roles of each of the agents and then have a ranking system. Although I'm not the biggest fan of ranking systems, it will give you an introduction to each of the agents, their strength and where they compare to the others. So let's get right into it. In order to fairly assess uh, the agents, I will put them into different roles. And if an agent excels at their role, they are generally good. If they can do more than one role, they are considered to be even better uh, than that. And if they are maybe subpar in most of what they are doing and only have a niche spot, then naturally they will score a little bit lower. So keep that in mind. I value flexibility and adaptability of the agent very, very much because although some agents are capable of doing extremely shiny plays, they might work in one out of 10 circumstances and then the nine out of 10 other missions you're left with a little bit less efficient agent. So we got to find that nice little average over all of the missions that you're going to uh, see. The four different roles uh, that an agent can find themselves in, or really three if you combine the first two, is number one, tank, which it means that the agent has an active taunting ability and a way to mitigate damage. The second one, which kind of can be merged into one role, is crowd control because it serves the same purpose, which is the application of status effect, most namely the knockdown effect in some shape or form. So reducing either the hit chance, the ability of the enemy to do something, their action points overall, uh, which would be dazed or knocked down, any way that they can act. Role number three would be damage dealer and I include both stress damage into that because some agents uh, use stress breaks in order to get their quote unquote kills and the other agents will just do normal damage, uh, so typical physical damage, which requires uh, also that the agent at least has some sort of armor penetration. So those with armor penetration will generally score higher because they are more self-sufficient. And then the fourth and final role is support, which really includes buffing others, increasing their movement or their positioning, and that's the most important part, toying with the action economy. If you can make the entire team move more often or act more often, then that will lead to overall more actions because you typically have with three agents, six AP. And if you at some point can manipulate that in uh, to making it more than six AP, then you are generally supporting the team, whether it's with yourself or with others is different story. So how do we uh, compare in that? And overall, how do the um, characters compare? So one word of advice, I will be using kind of the S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier uh, system. The first um, info is that none of the agents really scores into anything of C or D tier. And that's important uh, to know because typically in many games you do have a widespread of what agents are uh, doing or what uh, items are doing. Here you do have a relatively narrow spread. You can take any three agents and somewhat win in that game, which makes it a relatively speaking easy game from a tactical standpoint. So. Keep that in mind when we're going through the agents. Uh, topic number two is the agent's strength individually will of course increase with maybe the items that they do have. So what I'm going to review is the original chassis of uh, the character with very, very few exceptions because there are items that you can acquire 100% of the time that sometimes change the agent from one tier to another tier. But generally, we're not uh, looking into cards and we're generally not looking into um, any fully uh, statted uh, agents, but just the basic ones. So without further ado, after that intro, let's jump into the different agents. B tier, as in they are good at what they are doing, but they are not breaking the game and they are not excelling in more than one category. So B tier entry number one would be Latif. Latif is a starting agent and uh, contrary to how he looks like, Latif actually is uh, relatively good at uh, tanking and crowd controlling. It's funny because if you are going into the build, Latif in the end game can blind in a very, very 
a wide ar array and also provoke enemies in that array. If he then moves and shoots at blinded enemies, he's acquiring more evasion stacks. So he really is an evasion based uh, tank in all regards. And if you can stack things that are uh, synergizing with that as in cooldown reduction or stress reduction then he can do his job really well unfortunately the reason why he's quote-unquote only B tier is he's neither doing a significant amount of damage nor is he doing anything outside that little shtick and if the enemies aren't placed very well then Latif has a problem to um, contribute as much as others could all right, next entry on the tier list, B tier Judith, a very similar uh, set like Latif. Judith is a bruiser tank. She has an ultimate that allows you to aggro everyone in a certain distance. She does have a shield that she can place in an area to reduce damage. And other than that, she has a couple of grenades and a few shooting abilities, but nothing on um, the offensive to really write home about. She excels at gaining armor herself, being ultra sturdy and really really tanking for the team reducing the damage if you do have two other uh, damage dealers she is just doing absolutely fine the problem is outside of that she's not doing that much and for tanks unfortunately the reality is that some bruisers or tanks are just doing her tanking duty but on top of it they bring more to the table so judith is good you can play through with her but she's b tier at the end which brings us to the next entry in B tier, the new DLC hero Isaac, who is a fantastic damage dealer, but has its own problems. So Isaac comes with an LMG, the only character that doesn't require ammunition and uh, can shoot with the LMG as often as he wants. He builds up heat and then at some point he can either dissipate the heat or accept hit point burn as he is trying to knock down enemies more. Now, the good part about Isaac is once he gets going, he's an absolute force to be reckoned with because the number of shots overall increase with the amount of heat. And if you can stack that with passive abilities, just like armor shredding and a couple of on-hit abilities, you will get a lot out of this character. He can reduce his own stress. He can upgrade the stress of enemies that are cursed. So he does have a very particular spot in the game. Why is he only B tier though? Well, he's B plus tier, maybe bordering on A tier. But the problem with Isaac is if you do not have the necessary support for him, as in an armor shredding ability by himself um, or a team that really benefits from him doing what he's doing, then other damage dealers are simply doing a better job. Because he needs time to uh, set up, he will be very stationary whilst he is in his heated up state and all of that make a fluent battlefield like uh, Lamblighter's League a little bit more difficult uh, to go th uh, through. He's not a bad character in any stretch of the imagination. I almost put him into A tier but upon consideration and uh, really putting him side to side with other pure damage dealers Isaac in the both setup phase as well as his ability to move as well as his ability to just with his basic chassis do what he's supposed to do requires too much help to justify that he is on a higher tier than B tier. Which brings us to the fourth and last entry in the B tier spot, which is Alex and Reed. Unfortunately, the great game of Lamblighter's League does not allow you to have more than 10 agents in your roster, which is the reason why I need to show you two of the agents outside of the roster because you cannot recruit anything above 10 agents. But that's besides the point. Alex and Reed is a fire mage who focuses on kind of a hard to hit uh, style, but also can apply stress to enemies. If you are running Running as a dedicated stress team, then Alex and Reed is good at that. Her pure damage isn't as great as those of others. She has a lot of synergy potential, but uh, there are a couple of downsides with her in particular. Number one, uh, specifically the game around stressing out enemies is a very volatile one and Alex and Reed is more a supporter in that game than anything else uh, so she ends up in that uh, strange corner of sometimes being not effective in a turn and effectively using all of her abilities
abnormalities to kind of support the course but not really making a lot of progress because with uh, stress breaks it's all or nothing either you can stress break or you cannot and others like Celestine which we will see later is just doing a better job in that both together are a good combination but then again funnily enough others are uh, scaling better in the same game as she does so she ends up I would describe her as a jack of all trades master of none she's good as an agent you can bring her to uh, to the table but she unfortunately won't be as game breaking as, as others would be therefore kind of a b b plus rating and still a good agent but not as good as others Moving on to A tier, as in agents that are excelling at what they are doing in their one niche or do have uh, good capabilities in two niches. And first agent that we're going to look at, which is going to be kind of the benchmark for A tier, is Purnima. Purnima, the sniper, is excelling at what she's doing, which is sniping. Great range, which helps a ton because she doesn't need to reposition often. And once you understand her reset mechanics, uh, Purnima actually um, overcomes her big problem, which is all of her major shots cost you 2 AP. So you need to heavily go into cooldown reduction and you need to heavily uh, spec into kind of a team where multiple enemies can be marked, but that can be generally achieved. So with that little bit of uh, setup around Purnima, she transforms from shooting once around for a lot of damage into kind of a cleanup where you can uh, hit multiple targets in a row for 150 odd damage um, with every single shot and since she does need to reposition that really is fantastic on top of that she does have a cool uh, kit of self abilities that allow her to stealth and not take damage so she's really good at what uh, she is doing and the prototype of excelling in one niche but not offering a lot more if you need tps you take her all right, moving on to the next A tier agent, Nocturne, who you can get once you order the deluxe edition of the game. Nocturne is a very mobile skirmisher, also known as the shocking skirmisher. With her reposition ability, she can not only hide, but also infiltrate enemies' lines and then hit from behind. Unfortunately, her gun only has one ammunition at the beginning, which makes it A, hard hitting, but B, very difficult to work around the ammunition. So this is really where I have a problem with uh, the just chassis of uh, the... Um, agent because the agent can be much better with the right gearing and therefore fluctuates without any gear she would only qualify as b tier but i assume that over the course of your adventures you would find ways of dealing with her shortage in ammunition allowing her to more often shoot she also does have a nice reset ability for her signature ability savage uh, discharge which she can reset by herself, allowing her to just use it more freely and often than other agents would. So overall, she deals a lot of damage and does have a great way of bypassing cover. And with a little bit of basic equipment, you can actually work very well around her. However, she's not as straightforward as other characters. Overall, A tier. Which brings us to the next agent on the list, Gianji, uh, who is another A tier agent. Uh, and just like Nocturne, with a little bit of fluency between the tiers, I had a problem pointing him in the right tier. When you start the game with uh, Gianji, and specifically with uh, not many skills unlocked, he will really feel like a B tier agent. He's a frontliner, uh, or let's say rather a skirmisher. Uh, that is going into melee and is starting to excel over time in melee. Unfortunately, at the beginning, uh, you don't have the means to actually use his kit properly. He does get a lot of benefit and mileage out of gaining additional ability points. So later in the game, whilst you do have three, four different sources of additional ability points for GNG, he can become a force to be 
be reckoned with. He uh, very much uses a resource called flow. So over time, uh, he will gain flow with various abilities. They, however, have cooldowns. And once he is at maximum flow, he almost always crits. So he is near 100% crit rate. In the very end game, he does have 100% crit rate. And with every single crit uh, in the end game, he can start to just pile up additional ability points, uh, action points, which allows him to then continue his reign of terror, where he just is fast, goes through the enemies and deals a lot of damage. The reason why I can't put him into anything other than A tier at this point is, if you do not account for the vast majority of things that you need in order to make him usable, the sheer frame, even in the end, end game, is quote unquote just A tier. However, if you stack a lot of additional uh, things on him, as in more crit chance, more movement uh, capability, more uh, ability to regain uh, action points, and more cooldown reduction so that he can keep up his flow at a high level, then you will be rewarded with an exceptionally strong character that can even uh, go into low S tier because he can deal damage can at the same time buff or debuff and on top of it just deals an enormous amount of damage to the right targets at the right time and has reset mechanics so if that isn't enough to kind of justify that AA plus tier then I don't know what is however he's very equipment dependent which is why I put him just on the chassis into A tier so we're coming to the last agent in the A tier ranking, which is Celestine, one of the agents that is a bit more fluent in the rating. Since I'm only focusing on the pure agent without cards and equipment, I would put her into an AA plus tier with the um, tendency to go further up. Celestine fully embraces the idea of morale and stress breaks. She deals a lot of stress damage, tries to then kill the enemies as they are stressed out, and uses her signature ability Mesmerize to basically take Take, uh, control of an enemy and then uh, even reset that signature ability when killing an enemy in stress break. So you can see how that can lead to a couple of cascading nice effects. On top of that, her occult gamble is an ability that allows her to either build up stress herself or get an extra AP. And at the very end, uh, she can use it as often as she wants, only being limited by her own stress, so to speak. So you can already see how Celestine in the core setup can be a strong agent. My problem with her was the consistency. When I played uh, through the game, she had a couple of rounds where she was just dominating the uh, battlefield, and then she had a couple of rounds where she was barely doing anything. I will say, though, that with the right equipment and the right cards, you can definitely push her into S tier, because all of a sudden she solves uh, the problem with uh, ability points, uh, uh, action points rather, and she also solves her stress uh, um, dealing problem and the cooldown problem. I can talk about that uh, in one of the guides it would take too long for here but just uh, if you're building her right she can be an incredibly powerful force a plus tier as the base agent which brings us into s tier s tier those characters who excel at at least one uh, sort of activity or role and who are good at another one on top of that. Agents that typically turn the tide of the battle just by being in your group. Agents that are so strong that they are definitely heads and shoulders above other agents if they are played right. And we're starting with our four agents in this category with uh, first and foremost Fidir. Fidir typically would be a bruiser in A tier. He does have a shotgun with two shots. He does have a very nice uh, uh, finisher ability or signature ability uh, where he is picking up an enemy and then throwing them into um, a, an assortment of other enemies, knocking all of them down in a very wide cone. So that in itself is already great. But Fedir has more than that to offer. Besides his shotgun, he's healing um, whilst dealing damage, and he does have a taunt. So you can already see that he's kind of a mixture out of a tank, but also a strong crowd controller. And the shotgun does auto hit um, through cover. So if you line it up correctly, it actually deals a lot of damage to multiple targets as well. Fedir is becoming S tier though with the right equipment, just like 
like uh, Celestine, I would do you a disservice for not mentioning it. If you solve Fidier's biggest weakness, uh, which is number one, his speed, and if you solve his second biggest weakness, which is number two, the inability to really generate action points by himself, then you got a monster tank at your hands, a bruiser that at the same time can also crowd control the battlefield and deal damage. And that's really what you get with Fidir in the end game. And I haven't even looked into cards at this point. Fidir, if skilled correctly and with basic equipment that you always will get, can become an S uh, tier agent. So I would put him at S minus because the chassis itself is A tier, but he can very much excel and become better at what he's doing. Very strong agent. Moving on to another very strong agent, Eddie, which I would consider the strongest damage dealer in the game. And he's not the strongest damage dealer because he clocks the highest numbers, but because he fulfills a very specific role. Eddie is a multi-target uh, DPS, meaning that his own kit allows him to hit an incredible amount of targets. Whilst he is starting off um, reasonably tame with uh, the problem of not having enough ammunition to go through all of what he wants to do, uh, his light em up ability can hit up to six targets later and reset on kills on top of that with the right equipment and uh, there is plenty that you can do in order to get that um, he will also easily solve his ammunition problem which i would consider the only real downside of eddie his signature uh, ability can be used twice later which is a huge cone uh, that deals a lot of damage and ignores cover and on top of that eddie due to his multi-shot ability functions very well with any form of gadget that allows you to apply blinded or not down or uh, dazed so eddie is just excelling exceptionally at doing damage and on top of that creating status effect and on top of that just setting up others uh, to uh, do their worst did i also mention that eddie is with light him up automatically marking each of the targets not only supporting himself to auto crit and deal more damage but also supporting others like Purnima, for instance, to just snipe and clean up the battlefield. The synergy potential with this character is just unparalleled. And the point why I would rate Eddie as S tier is not only does he deal at least as much damage, if not more damage than others, he has all of these other things going for him. He has a built-in feature to also armor penetrate, which means you do not necessarily need to skill into that. He deals non-resistible damage, uh, which bypasses armor, so he himself is fine anyways. So he just has all of the things going for him. It is very difficult to find things that Eddie is not great at, even his single target damage, if you are uh, being able to apply days and then knock down is fantastic once targets are marked he can uh, bullseye them for enormous amounts of damage and he comes with a whole host of options to just deal damage to many many targets and uh, in this game that is an ability that is very very strong bonus point he's one of two agents with nocturne together that can hit multiple uh, targets as in clean mirror images of void uh, walkers which is important because all of a sudden you can kind of m move around that nice little defensive feature as well moving on to the next s tier agent which is anna sophia anna sophia is an oddball and i think many people who start the game will overlook her abilities and kind of put her automatically in the support niche and you kind of think okay well she's doing support and that's only what she is doing but there is a bit more to it once you understand the fine nuances of her character she by herself with the core abilities regains ability points from healing others if you use healing elixirs as uh, aoe heals or if you use her own ultimate um, she is uh, gaining ap from that so she by herself can generate ap for herself on top of that she does have the motivate ability which gives two uh, ap's one to two characters at the cost of just one ap so she's increasing the overall amount of actions she does have very decent cooldown reduction for herself just built in in the kit and it gets incredibly strong if you're scaling more into that 
allowing her to even trigger, motivate multiple times in a round with her own um, uh, AP generation abilities. That means she's essentially multiplying the AP for the entire team. On top of it, her kit has armor penetration, which sets up others and even deals a reasonable amount of damage herself. And fully upgraded uh, Anna Sophie might be a little bit of a sleeper uh, type of damage dealer because I've worked with uh, her and she is hitting for 80s to 100 in end game which is very very respectable damage if you put on top of that that every single hit reduces her uh, or has a chance to reduce her cooldowns and then generate even more AP for everyone she's really breaking the game open because all of a sudden others are um, more enabled and more engaged if you add cards on top of that later then she becomes completely busted as she uh, can um, allow others to be cleansed and buffed uh, the entire time her ultimate um, and i should say that as well restores others uh, ultimate charges so essentially that's another additional effect where she just has a nice uh, support ability so she excels exceptionally in the support category is a decent damage dealer and has some sort of crowd control if you build her uh, correctly so that all together specifically the action point manipulation makes her a force to be reckoned with and she solidly resides in s tier i should say one last uh, thing her bless ability also resets cooldowns and that together with someone like celestine who is ex exceptionally cooldown reliant or other characters that are exceptionally cooldown reliant purnima being another one of them will give your characters another second wind, uh, so to speak, to use those best abilities again. Anna Sophie is a beast. And the final entry on our S tier list is Ingrid. Ingrid, base character, just brings a lot uh, to the table. And I've seen many discussions online about other characters being stronger than Ingrid. Uh, Fenrir was one case that has been made other cases that has been uh, have been made is a late game uh, GNG but hear me out and that's uh, kind of a vested perspective on it I've played uh, this game for a long uh, time and I've really given every single character a fair chance um, Ingrid definitely is potentially the most uh, variable and most reliant character that you can think about. The reason why she's considered SS plus tier is because she does have a passive ability that allows her to uh, regain one action point whenever she kills an enemy. But that's not the only reason why she is just breaking the game open. That is um, just an incredibly handy and easy way to continue um, giving her kill chains. She does have more than that. Uh, remember when I said there are four roles? Ingrid fulfills essentially all four of them single-handedly and is not bad in either of them. She can tank reasonably well, as in giving her exposed positions and even has evasion if she wants to. She does have a fantastic crowd control ability. Her um, ultimate not only heals herself, but um, also knocks down multiple enemies, which is the strongest form of crowd control. She does have a pushback kick that um, automatically does a uh, knockdown if the target hits a wall and, or another object or another enemy, which is very frequently happening. And she does have her strike and all which um, is an ability that later can also create knockdown so as the base kit she already does have two knockdown abilities it gets worse as very few uh, early in the game you can get the cooldown reduction item where with every single strike um, you can reduce your own cooldowns essentially every single strike can be a knockdown and remember what i said about uh, knockdowns and dazing she can do both of that at the same time so she's a tank she's a good uh, crowd controller her damage is actually very very nice uh, 60 plus per hit in the end game uh, which allows her to easily clean up uh, even larger um, 
uh, Krauts. She does have a built-in armor shredding capability, which is great as well. And she does have the ability for the right positioning to blade storm twice around, further increasing damage. Unfortunately, standing up from knockdown does not trigger it. That would just be the icing on uh, the cake, but everything else is good. Her action economy, when she's able to clean up enemies, is fantastic. And really, why I value her so highly is because of her consistency. Say there are four or five enemies that you are fighting, which is overwhelming odds, five versus three. Inrid can oftentimes crowd control all five of them in the first round and continue to crowd control later down through three of them continuously so that they can, can't do anything, zero. They are not able to act whatsoever. And that is just an ultra strong ability because since you're not time bound in many of the missions, all you need to do is continue to crowd control and you will eventually win without taking a single point of damage. She can on top of that uh, self heal under the right circumstances and we haven't even looked into cards which make Ingrid even better. So the point being is whilst she is not excelling at damage as much as a, G a GNG or as a Fadir. Uh, she is not requiring um, signature abilities in order to do her job. Just the base kit of her is already dealing a lot of damage, is crowd controlling heavily, 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 and she's breaking the action economy just by herself. A cleverly played Ingrid can single-handedly improve every single uh, setup that you're running. And that's really the true uh, sign of a great uh, character. So all of the S tier characters are good, but a uh, special shout out uh, to Ingrid. She is definitely a force to be reckoned with and potentially um, or arguably the strongest character in the game, even in the very, very late end game under the right circumstances, she brings a lot to the table. So that's it. That is the ranking of all characters. Now, naturally, I'd be interested in what is your opinion? If you have pl played Lamplighter's League, have I done the characters a solid service? Was uh, the rating okay? Are you disagreeing with any of my judgments? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. And good luck on your journey, lamplighters. Take care. Bye-bye.